fancy automobile with the chauffeur that's parked outside. It's Mr. Swanson. He's the chairman of the county political committee, and he's in there with Brad right now. Gee, a real big shot. What does he want? Wouldn't I like to know? <laughs> I realized it was something very hush-hush, so I left him alone. Oh, I'd give anything to know what they're talking about. So you see, Brad, when we run our slate for the next election, as county chairman, I want the most powerful group of candidates I can gather. Men of the highest caliber. So that's why I want you to run for president of the city council. Well, I don't know, Mr. Swanson. I realize it's a great honor, but frankly, I don't know if I ought to. Well, I understand your natural reluctance, Brad. So uh, why don't we leave it up to Mrs. Stevens? From the few times that I've met her, she seems to be a sensible woman. Oh, yes, 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 she is. You know, women have a natural instinct about knowing what's good for their husbands. Go and ask her. Well, no, you see, I don't want to bother. She's busy in the kitchen. Well, I'll call her. Oh, uh, uh, Mrs. Stevens! You rang, sir? Oh, uh, Mrs. Stevens, uh, I'd like your opinion on something. Uh, Mr. Swanson wants me to run for president of the city council. President of the city council? And that's right. I'm handpicking my entire slate of candidates for the next election. And if I get the men I want, I'm sure our ticket will win easily. Well, so am I, but I don't think I can be a candidate. Why not, Brad? Well, dear, I just haven't had enough experience. I can't see myself in a public campaign. Besides, I'm perfectly happy in my present situation. Look, Brad, you're one of the key men I want on my slate. Don't give me your answer right now. Take a couple of days and think it over. Well, well I've got to be running along. I, uh, I have an appointment with the mayor. Now, don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Swanson. My husband's mind is made up right now. Just give me a little time to get it through his head. Keep working on him, Mr. Stevens. Oh, I will. <laughs> Goodbye, Brad. Goodbye, Mr. Swanson. Goodbye, Mr. Swanson. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Brad, this is the chance of a lifetime. No, the chance to make myself the laughing stock of the city. Joan, you're wasting your time talking. I'm just not the boat getting type. Well, you are the vote getting type, Brad. Now, you take any public official that you want to mention. A mayor, governor, senator. You know how they got their jobs? Politics. <laughs> well, they did. <laughs> what do you think, Mabel? Mr. Swanson wants Brad to run for president of the city council. President? Gee, we're getting more important neighbors all the time. Yeah, the trouble is Brad doesn't want to run. He's afraid he won't get elected. Well, he lacks confidence. I remember I had the same problem with Charlie. When we were in school, he was so bashful and so shy, he wouldn't ask me to go out. What'd you do? Well, I built up his confidence. I told him how handsome he was and how clever, and I kept complimenting him and praising him. And that gave him confidence to go out? It sure did. He went out with every girl in school. I had to wait six weeks before I could get a date with him. Anyway, it worked. Yeah. Build up his confidence. Yeah, Mabel, maybe you're right. Yeah. What's sauce for your goose ought to be sauce for my goose. Gander? Bring it on to the top. Oh, what makes you so blamed cheerful at this hour of the morning? Just seeing your smiling, handsome face. <laughs> God, you're a good-looking devil. <laughs> Brad, you really got it. Yeah, home. well, I'm glad that you're the only one that can see me in the morning. Well, so am I, dear. Otherwise, all the other girls would try to steal you away from me. <laughs> I mean, dear. Maybe you do have a point. Of course, I put on a few pounds. And it's just what you needed with your muscular figure. Now you're perfect. Well, that's one way of looking at it. more often. You mean shave more than once a day? No, silly. I mean sing. Uh, your voice is wonderful. It's, it's so resonant, so melodious. Really, dear? Oh, yes. I dream <laughs> of me with a light on the hair. Uh, Joan, do you really think I have a good voice, dear? Brad, good is
is not the word for your voice. Really? Uh, it's magnificent. Uh, honest to goodness, dear. Cross my finger. Uh, heart, heart. Uh, your singing comes right from the heart, dear. Oh, really, dear? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, look, I, I nick myself shaving. A nick? Why, that's a man-sized cut. Oh, honey, it was nothing. Oh, maybe to a man of your courage it's nothing, but I'll bet anybody else would have fainted at the sight of all that blood. Oh, look, you know, you know, that reminds me of a story. A, a fella once cut himself shaving, see? And his friend said, uh, uh, was it a, a bad cut? And he said, uh, I wouldn't say it was bad, but every time I, I take a, a drink of water, my throat leaks. My throat leaks? <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, the story wasn't that funny. I know, dear, but the way you tell it is so sensational. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a picture, and of course, the delivery. Is that what you? <laughs> it is funny. We might tell that to the fellows out there. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mabel explain everything, Charlie? No, she sure did. You just leave everything to Charlie Harris and Boy Confidence Builder. <laughs> well, we all set for some bridge? Yes, sir. The lambs have come to the slaughter. Are you kidding? You beat us the last eight times. <laughs> oh, it's pure luck. I know I can't match you when it comes to skill. Well, I guess you were pretty lucky at that. <laughs> you keep score, Brad. You have such a wonderful mind for mathematics. Oh, all right. Come on, Charlie Dale. Oh, OK. Ooh. Mabel, would you try and open that? It's so tight. Oh. oh, I can't do it, Charlie. Will you try it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really tight. Brad, maybe you can do it. Yeah. Real tight. <laughs> oh, Brad is so strong, my boy. <laughs> Brad, uh, tell Mabel and Charlie the joke you told me this morning. Oh, it was nothing. Oh, come on. I'm sure it's hilarious. Oh, it sure is. Tell the joke, dear. Uh, no, come no. On. Well, uh, well, all right. You see, uh, uh, this fella cut himself shaving, and his friend said, was it a bad cut? And he said, I, I wouldn't say it was bad. <laughs> it, it... <laughs> Oh, go, go ahead, Brad. Sorry. Yeah, well, he said, I, I wouldn't say it was bad, but every time I, I take a drink of water, my throat leaks. Oh, Brad, you killed me with your sense of humor. <laughs> me too, you know. If you ever run for any public office, it's jokes like that that'll pull the votes. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, people do enjoy a good laugh. There's no doubt about that. Oh, uh, uh, pass. 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 Six no Trump. <coughs> Six no Trump. What a fight! Brad, I knew I could count on you to come through for us. I have every confidence in your ability. So when you called me here for your decision, I wasn't a bit surprised. All he needed was a little confidence. That's right. Until I saw myself in the proper light, I was too scared to even consider running for president of the city council. Now you can. No. What? Huh? Well, no, I, I realize it would be ridiculous for a man of my abilities to run for so unimportant an office. Unimportant? <laughs> but, but, Brad, I, I don't understand. It's quite simple. I decided to run for mayor. What? what? <laughs> Might as well withdraw your candidate. He won't stand a chance. I've created a Frankenstein. But he can't run for mayor. You've got to do something. Now, don't worry, Mr. Swanson. I'm responsible for this, and I'll talk him out of it, or my name isn't Joan Frankenstein. <laughs> Here you are, dear. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, honey. Bye-bye. Mm. Hello? Oh, hello, Mabel. Mabel, it, it just took hours to talk Brad out of the idea that he should run for mayor. It, it, it was just awful. Uh, you know, uh, he has to give up being a judge to run. Uh, and then he'd wind up neither a judge nor a mayor. No, no, he isn't home. He's just gone to the office. <laughs> but can you imagine Brad trying to run for mayor? I, I guess we build up his confidence too much. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have laughed so hard at his jokes. 
Well, anyway, everything's all right now. I've got him built up enough for the city council and not enough for mayor. And that's just what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, now listen, Mabel. Brad must never find out what we did to him. Well, yes, Mabel, I mean you. You know how you like to talk. Me? Well, of course he'll never find out from me. You know I can keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Joni! Joni, I'm, I'm home. Ah, uh, hello, dear. Yeah, hello, lover. Oh, have I had a busy day getting ready for the election, and have I got a surprise for you. Well, don't tell me that you've decided to run for mayor again. <laughs> no, no. Oh, good. Don't worry, dear. I'm not running for mayor. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, that's all I was worried about. Say, so I better finish fixing dinner. <laughs> yes, dear. I'm running for governor. <laughs> Dear. Well, dear, I'm not joking. I'm going to run for governor, and then maybe senator, and, and then president. And if you hadn't built up my, my confidence, I never would have thought of my qualifications. I owe it to the public. Oh, no, Brad, listen. Well, no, dear. A man of my ability, a man of my intelligence, it would be criminal to deprive the people of presidential timber. Right. Uh, don't you think that you ought to start with the city council? Honey, I'm a cinch to be governor. Uh, now, look, dear, uh, I've asked all the reporters from the papers to come over tomorrow night. I'm going to make official announcement of my candidacy. Brad, I'm uh, Oh, look, dear, oh, oh just, just a minute. Dear, uh, here's something I, I want you to do for me. What is it? Well, uh, this is a petition. You see, every candidate for governor in this state, it's a state regulation, has to get a thousand names. It's a mere formality. But will you do it for me, dear? Well, Brad... No, dear, I have a lot of thinking to do about the speech, you know, for the reporter, so you just get to work on the petition. And remember, dear, it's just one step from the governor to the White House. Uh, now, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I wish to announce my hat is in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I wish to announce my arm is in a sling. The whole arm. Pardon me, sir, but you wouldn't want to sign your name to this petition. Uh, thanks a lot. I knew you wouldn't. <laughs> thanks for your trouble. Just the same. <laughs> uh, pardon me, but you too wouldn't want to sign the petition, would you? That's what I thought. Thank you for your trouble. <laughs> Paper lady? No, thanks. Yeah. Might give me something to do while I sit here with this petition. You want names on that petition? I'll sign it. <laughs> well, thanks, but I'm afraid you're not old enough. Well, if you are having trouble, maybe I can ask all the people to sign it when they buy my paper. <laughs> no, thanks. You see, the point is, I, I don't want to get any signatures on this petition. You have a petition you don't want people to sign? That's right. Well, when the people buy my paper, maybe I can ask them not to sign it. I couldn't even get some of them not to sign it twice. Then, pretty soon, you'll be full of no signatures. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid this is all very puzzling to you, uh, um... Ricky. Ricky, sit down, dear. You see, if I get a thousand signatures on this, my husband can run for governor, and he hasn't got a chance to win. And then he wouldn't be a judge anymore, either. So for his own sake, I must not get any signatures on the petition. Then we'd lose the house and no food, no clothing, no job. Mm. Oh, now I understand. For a minute, I thought you were not well. Up here. <laughs> Tell me something, lady. If you do not get the names, your husband can get them himself, no? Or someone else can get them, no? No. I mean, yes, yes. Then what is the use of what you're doing? Well, I, I just thought that I... You know, it's very embarrassing for a grown-up to be asked impossible questions by a little boy. I'm sorry, lady. But you were right, Ricky. You sure had a point there. What is... Say, I know how to stop Brad from running for governor. Tell me, how much do you make a day selling papers? Well, I make about, uh... Lady, you're not from the income tax. <laughs> Look, whatever you make, I'll pay you the same amount. 
You like to ask questions, don't you? Yes, I do. And I would like to ask one now. What is this all about? Well, I'll tell you. You see, my husband is expecting a lot of reporters over at the house this evening, and you're going to be one of them. Me? Yes, a reporter from a grammar school paper. And you're going to ask Brad questions that's going to make him change his mind about running for governor. Now, we'll go down to the Hall of Records and we'll find questions that are difficult and complicated. It'll be a way to make him see that he doesn't know everything, a way to shake his confidence. Yes, yes, that's right. I want a full press conference. Reporters from all the papers. I'll give full details of my candidacy for the governorship. You'll have them here? Oh, that's fine. Goodbye. Uh, Joan, I didn't hear you come in. Oh, Brad, are you really going to announce to the press that you're going to run for governor? Well, of course. Uh, let's see, when they come, I think I'll tell them that joke about cutting myself when shaving. Let's see. Drink of water, cut the throat, the throat leaks. I'll kill the reporters. Or vice versa. I said that's a nicer versa. It's just like a poetry. You push them up a big joke, huh? I uh, wonder who that can be. Maybe it's one of the reporters. Reporters? Yeah. Oh, reporters? Yes, yes, of course. Is this the residence of Judge Bradley Stevens? Uh, well, yes, it is, son. What can I do for you? I am here for the press conference. The press conference? Oh, uh, perhaps he's a reporter on his school paper. All the grammar schools have papers these days. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Uh, this is my wife, Mrs. Stevens. Oh, won't you uh, have a seat, young man? There we are. Now, let's see, uh, what can I uh, do for you? I have heard from a reliable source that you are a candidate for governor, Judge Stevens. Well, I'm very happy to see children paying so much attention to public affairs. As I always say, the boy of today is the citizen of tomorrow. Very good. May I quote you? Yes. Yes, we may. Thank you. I'm sure you'll be happy to answer any questions the little boy might have, won't you, Brad? Well, of course, of course, Joni. Uh, anything you want to know, son? Well, yes. <laughs> Where structural improvements and street bonds have increased property taxes beyond 8% delinquency, how may the landholder best be assist? Uh, structural improvements? 8% delinquency? Is that what they're worried about in grammar school? Well, the children are very advanced these days, Brad. Uh, what's the matter, dear? Can't you answer the question? Well, as a matter of fact, I can't. Uh, do you have another question you want to ask me, son? Well, yes, I have, sir. I would like to know, Judge Stevens, yes. <clears throat> if a skating rink within the city limits provides more than 15 square feet per person for not more than 50 people, what minimum exits would you provide? If, uh, 50 uh, exits. Uh, very well put. You, you phrased it uh, very, very well. Uh, let's see. 15 square foot per person with the no exits. Uh, uh, how many people did you say? Well, there was about, uh, uh, there was, uh... <laughs> I see. Tell me, young man, uh, was that a roller skating rink or an ice skating rink? Well, that was, um, uh, uh, oh, ice skating. I see. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. I don't understand it, Joan. I can't answer that question either. Oh, that's a shame, Brad. Well, maybe he's just bright for his age. But he's just a boy. How can I run for governor if I can't answer the question from the lips of an 11-year-old? Oh, well, maybe you can answer his next question, Brad. Uh, yes, well, uh, what do you want to know, son? Well, I would like to know, Judge Stevens. Mm. My question is very easy. Oh. <laughs> what requirements would you recommend in real state control hard elevators <laughs> What was that? Uh, Snapdragons. Oh, one of them just snapped. Oh, they'll do it, you know. Rheostat that control. Section number 54. <laughs> if I can't answer questions from him, what am I going to do with grown-up reporters? I, I can't face them. Oh, don't worry, Brad. You'll be able to answer one of them. Uh, do you have another question, Mom? Yes, I would like to know, Judge Stevens. Um, uh, well, my question is, um, yes. what assistance should be levied on bowling alleys where, um, 
Federal tax on not more than 4% total receipts? Oh, what's the use? How can I answer that question if I can't answer the question before it? Uh, what was that last one again? The last one? Uh, yes, yes, the last one. What assessment should uh, No, 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 the, the one before that. Oh, the one before that. The one before that, that. Yes, yes, yes. What requirement? No, 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 the one about the skating rink. Oh, the skating rink. The skating rink, that's the one. Uh, no, no, the one, the structural improvement oh, with the 8%. Oh, structural improvement. That was the 8%. No, wait, about the rheostat oh, control. Re the rheostat control, that's the one. What no, 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 I tell you what, the one I know is the bowling alley. Oh, the bowling, the bowling alley. alley. That's the, the bowling one I want you to, wait, can you ask me that? What assessment should be levied against bowling alleys where, um... Oh, never mind, never mind. I, I give up, I'm humiliated. Joan, Joan, just, just call the reporters and, and call the press conference off. <laughs> You mean you're not going to run for governor? Oh, I, I, I never was. Oh, good. <laughs> then we can tell you. <laughs> I never was running for governor, dear. Huh? And you went to all the trouble with the window shades and the, and the picture and the shoes. And, you... and it was all for nothing. Is that like, <laughs> yeah, and those silly questions the about, the bo about the skating rink and the bowling alleys. Oh, and you thought I was stupid enough to fall for a foolish stunt like that. Now, don't get excited, Dad. Well, I'm not. I, I just get angry every time I think of how stupid you thought I was. Please, Judge. Mrs. Stevens only wanted to help you. That's right. I was just going to build up your confidence. Yes, well, for your information, you went about it all wrong, Joe. Uh, there's a way to help people without making them look foolish. A way to be helpful. A way to be considerate. And away, away we, we go. Gee, <laughs> what a grouch. Bye, Mary Jones. What a girl.